All right, well, welcome back to Exhaust Sports Auto. My name is Kevin, and we are here to present to you the 2020 Lexus GS350 F Sport. And this is indeed the rear wheel drive model as well. So who do we have to thank for this opportunity? It is none other than Johnson Lexus in Durham, North Carolina. So I will leave all of Danny's information down in the description box below and you can have fun buying all of the Lexus cars here on the lot. This particular model has about 3,400 miles on it, but it is a 2020 model year. And why am I reviewing this model? Because I've done like three different GS videos already, but they were all the 2013 and 2015 model years, which I believe to be the best model years for the GS. I even compared it to a Porsche Panamera, and you know what? It was pretty much identical in driving dynamics, except the GS actually rode even better. And I'm talking about the 2015 GS that I compared it with. And here's the thing, I also drove a 2016 GS350 with the F Sport as well, and that car was so neutered. They absolutely ruined that car. All it felt like was a rear wheel drive Camry, and I just could not believe it because the previous 13 to 15 cars were amazing to drive. So I want to see if they continue to neuter it here, but I really want to like this car because this thing is really nice on the interior. It's solid as hell. I, I get it. It's brand new, but man, this is a really nice ride. So I want to see how this thing is going to drive. I mean, who knows? Maybe they changed it. You know what I'm saying? For maybe 2018s and up, but who knows? Some of you have actually said that you like the way that these cars drive, like you bought like a 2016 and up and you absolutely love it. But here's the thing though, people who haven't driven many cars, I mean, they just seem to like everything. So I can only take that with a grain of salt when people say that they actually like those cars. I guess we can briefly talk about the looks, you know, while we get this thing warmed up here a little bit. The looks on this car obviously changed for 2016s and up. Some of you like it, some of you hate it. I personally, I love it. I think it looks amazing for 2016 and up, but I also like the clean look of the 15s as well. But you let me know in the comment section whether you like it or not. The other thing is this is the F Sport, of course, so it obviously gets a more uh, upgraded kind of body kit, makes it look a lot more aggressive. Maybe you guys will like that a little bit better, but we'll see. I'm focused more so on the drive, so let's talk about some basic specs with the car. Well, here's the thing though. When I drove the 2016, obviously the car rode amazing, of course. It had all the typical Lexus quality, so I love that, but here's the thing though. Okay, not bad. All right, I like that. That's pretty good, okay. Oh, before we get into that, okay, so the 2016 car, it did ride amazing, I will give it that. But here's the other thing, the transmission logic and the engine performance felt so laggy. Uh, that was the main thing. So there is that, but okay, onto this 2020 model year because that's more important now. This F Sport does get larger front brakes, of course, and there is an option of getting rear wheel steering with this vehicle as well. So that's only with the rear wheel drive model. So if you got the all wheel drive, you get a six speed automatic versus this eight speed that you get with the rear wheel drive models. And with the F-Sports, you also get the variable gear ratio steering. Uh, for the 2013-2015 cars, it wasn't a really a big deal. I did not really care at all. But let me tell you something. This 2020, I'm very proud to say it's reacting pretty freaking good. I'm not going to lie. I have it in the normal mode right now. That's how I was driving the uh, previous 2016 car as well. No idea what was wrong with that vehicle. The thing with that 2016 was it only had 30,000 miles on it too. So it was a very clean car. But yeah, so far, I mean, I haven't really driven it much yet, but like I'm already really liking it and I'm about to take it out on the highway here a little bit. This thing al already sounds amazing. Uh, we'll put in the Sport Plus a little bit later as well. But yeah, this is doing extremely well. I noticed this car does not have double pane glass or anything like that. The refinement and everything was always great with these uh, GS models, uh, especially if you had it with uh, some good all season tires. That was never an issue with the refinement and tire noise, so that's good. This is really jumpy. I really like, this is actually aggressively tuned. I don't know, maybe if they change it for 2018 and up. This is spectacular. Oh my goodness. I like this more than the freaking 2015 car. That's ridiculous. St still got the same stupid like BMW turn signal. That sucks, I don't like that. Very good refinement though. I'm doing a pretty legitimate speed right now. Continues to pull extremely well even after you get it up to speed. This is great. Yeah, that motor was always great. You know, that three and a half liter V6, of course. That 311 horsepower, 280 pounds feet of torque. That is fantastic. The steering rack is perfectly weighted. I love that as well. Even at like 70 plus miles an hour, I was doing a lot more than that, but just for video's sake, 70 plus miles an hour. 
the wind noise is really well controlled. The ride quality, that was kind of a bumpy highway road right there, is really good. I mean, the ride quality was always excellent with every generation of GS, so that's great. Brakes are great, of course. I mean, like I mentioned, the brakes uh, have been upgraded actually for this uh, F Sport model, of course. Uh, dude, no, I, I am absolutely shocked with this thing. I'm gonna put this thing into the Sport Plus now. It does not light up the, uh, the rear tires. Now it's foot to the floor, effortless power. It's reacting perfectly to my inputs. You don't have to put it in the Sport Plus mode. The normal mode was perfect. The reason why I hate Sport Plus is because you just start hovering around 2000 RPM, wasting twice as much fuel as you need to. But the biggest takeaway here is this is a good car. And I'm not just saying that to just to you know say it or whatever. I don't have to say nice things about this if I don't want to. I was actually getting ready to absolutely just annihilate this car and just totally brush this thing off, but I am so happy I don't have to do that. If you're in the market for a newer model GS, this is great. But please let me know in the comment section if you've driven a 2016 model and you've driven maybe like an 18 model, I feel like maybe 18's and up. Maybe they fixed it again, I don't know. Maybe now I have to go back and review a 2016 model here, huh? Who knows, but man, that is crazy. I gen I'm not joking about this. I genuinely did not like driving that GS 2016 model year. That's crazy. But anyway, back to this car. I mean, all the great things are still here. You know, double wishbone front suspension. You got all that good stuff going on here. You got the multi-links in the rear, of course, so that is fantastic. So the suspension geometry has been excellent with pretty much every single Lexus besides the ES, which uses the strut base suspension alongside some um, some other SUVs. But this is quiet, it's composed, it's refined. Hell, dude, this is kind of the car I'd want on my driveway, honestly. This is actually turning out to be a no-compromise vehicle. And um, you might be arguing, well, how does it stack up to the German cars? One of my subscribers, they described it perfectly. These Lexus cars, you can own this for 10 plus years and be satisfied owning it. With the German cars, they give you a fantastic first impression and that's why many car reviewers like them. And then they quickly fall flat on their face. You get tired of it. You want to turn it in after like three to six months. The, the Lexus cars are not like that. You might have to test drive it a few times to really get used to it. And we don't need to put in the Sport Plus. It's just unnecessary. Um, you can get this thing a little bit sideways too. This is, forgive me, that's just a stupid safety features, which I'll talk about in a little bit. But yeah, these things are perfectly calibrated for the streets to be satisfying on the streets. Oh, actually, let's put in the Sport Plus and test out those paddles here a little bit. did kick me out of that mode here. I think you got to put in the manual mode for you to get the, uh, yeah. Let's see if it, uh, okay, it'll still auto upshift even in the manual mode, which that kind of sucks, but the uh, responsive paddle shifters are very crispy, so I appreciate that. That's very good. I'm in the normal mode now. Even in the normal mode, the paddles are reacting extremely well. But anyway, sorry I keep getting distracted. There's a few things I just want to check out with this car. That's all. It's got a nice neutral balance to it where you can kind of get it sideways if you wanted to. Keep in mind, this thing is also riding on 19-inch wheels that are optional for the uh, the F-Sport. Now, this thing will normally ride on 18-inch wheels, but even with the 19s, they ride perfectly. Man, I love that. But anyway, like I was saying, yeah, these Lexus cars are perfectly cal calibrated for street driving. Like, this V6 sounds so freaking magical because they have that induction tube, and there's an emotion and a connection here that I find to be superior with some of the German cars, actually. I don't hate German cars, absolutely not. I mean, I, I lost after a few of them, but you can't deny it, dude. The way Lexus tunes some of these cars, it is just magical. You just have to drive it to understand it. These things do zero to six in about five and a half seconds, whereas some of the uh, German cars will do it in about four and a half seconds. You know what I'm saying? But they're like a one trick pony and it kind of dies off. Sure, they're refined, sure. You know, they're comfortable to drive and all that good stuff. They're kind of quick with their little turbo engines, but this is also really quick. This is deceptively quick. And that's something you have to keep in mind with these cars. This is a quality driving product. This is one I would be happy to drive on an everyday basis. This is actually very nice. 
Yeah, this has now been perfected over the 2015 GS350 F Sport that I really loved. And that's crazy to say. I mean, I don't know, comment below, guys. I mean, if you're an owner of a 2016 and you've driven some of these other models of the 18s, the 20s, you know, you let me know in the comment section. You know, um, share all your thoughts, you know, with the regular GS350, with the F Sport. Share all your thoughts. Whatever experience you have with the car, please do let me know in the comment section below. This is uh, quite perplexing even to me. I feel like a lot of these Lexus cars, they give me kind of a different driving uh, impression like uh, when I drove the LS 500 one of the cars had wind noise the other one did it it was very just like kind of all over the place and uh, these are high quality cars you know I'm not saying there is an issue with the way that these cars are built or anything like that but it's just very strange I mean that these are dramatic um, opinions that I'm having opinion changes that I'm having with these cars so I want you guys to also leave your thoughts in the comment section as well it's very important because I really like this car I, I really want to like this car and I want to like the 2016 as well because it looks amazing this is a no compromise experience I mean as you know I haven't really had any real complaints with this car this has reacted extremely well the everything is a lot more touchy here than I remember it with my beloved 13 to 15 years. The steering is more responsive. The suspension, I feel like, is even a little bit more softer. Obviously, the F-Sport gets the adaptive suspension as well. The throttle seems to be a little bit more touchy, even in the regular mode, so that's another thing to keep in mind. Yeah, this is a car worth leasing. I like the size of this thing. This thing is about 192 or 194 inches long, something along those lines. So it's a nice mid-size sedan. So the extended wheelbase is also helping it ride a little bit better. Uh, granted, the uh, rear seats aren't gargantuan. It, I definitely fit, don't get me wrong, but it's mainly the trunk that's huge, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. And, uh, you know, obviously this car, I'll end off on this. Also, it's available with all-wheel drive as well, so you can make this into a nice little... Uh, you know, all season vehicle if you wanted to. And that'll weigh around uh, 3,900 pounds if you get that. And this is about 3,700 pounds for this particular model. So that's pretty good. This eight speed, all of it is kicking down extremely well. This is all programmed exactly the way I want it to. Uh, I do like the six speed as well. Uh, six speed automatics are great. There's not many gears for the vehicle to jump down. So that's pretty good brakes are nice and progressive you know Lexus again they tune this stuff extremely well for street driving there's only a slight bit of roll but it's perfect man it's enough it's predictable it makes it fun you, I can tell you can definitely fling this thing around and get this thing sideways if you want to um, I have not driven the GSF but when I drove the RS but when I drove the RC 350 F Sport and the RCF I've noticed that they actually drive very similar it's just that one of you just get the amazing V8, basically. That's the uh, main difference. But otherwise, I would not be surprised if this drives identical to a GSF. So there is that. And, you know, I was mentioning that uh, that GSF there, but honestly, I don't even think that's necessary, dude. This V6 is pure bliss to operate this thing. So I absolutely love it, man. There's uh, Driving it, dude, I don't have any complaints about this car. This, this has no issues with me. The one main thing that pissed me off is that stupid freaking turn signal. Why can't they change that and make it into like a regular turn signal like I have in my uh, LC500? It's very strange and bizarre that they keep doing that, but whatever. Um, driving, done. Love this car. Shot to say that I was getting ready to roast the hell out of it, but that was not necessary. This was fantastic. Uh, again, comment below. But anyway, let's talk about this interior. Enough of that. Interior is also solid as hell, man. I've, dro I've driven these cars with 250,000 miles, and they are still solid. I mean, you might get one little creak from the door, and that's about it with 250,000 miles. Other than that, super solid. Everything works, so that's fantastic. And this one is a great interior choice, especially with the black exterior. I do like these seats as well. The comfort is amazing. You get 10-way uh, power seats for both the front driver's seat and the passenger seat if you get the regular GS, the base model. The upgraded F Sport makes you get 16 way uh, power adjustable seats for the front driver's seat. Dude, a Porsche, you'll be lucky to get a four way power adjustable seat in a Porsche, so that's pretty crazy. Yeah, one touch up and down windows for all four windows, like I mentioned, no double pane glass. The steering wheel is amazing. This perforated F Sport wheel, there's no flat bottom or anything, but the perforations, the grip on this thing is fantastic. I, I like the paddles as well. You got uh, automatic headlights, you got heated steering wheel heated and cooled seats you got a lot of little options here as well so keep that in mind you also get all the safety features standard with this car blind spot monitoring lane keep assist the brake assist stuff you know as you came on here it kind of read the thing wrong but whatever you get all the safety stuff here and you can turn it off if you want to so i like how you can customize that you also get the 
LFA inspired gauge cluster. You got that here as well. But in this vehicle, it does not move or anything like that. It is stationary, but it still looks amazing. I like the way it changes when you put it into the Sport Plus. So that's pretty cool. You got traditional gear lever knob, love that. You got two big cup holders here as well. Love the climate control. You got the 12.3 inch screen, no Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. I personally don't care. I just hook it up to Bluetooth and listen to that ML audio, which this particular car does have. 17 speakers, 835 watts, very excellent sound system, one of the best in the game. I appreciate that, love that. But you also get a regular 12 speaker setup in the base model cars, which also sounds amazing. So keep that in mind. You don't need the ML, but the ML is a very nice touch. You got the mouse style with the enter buttons on the side here for the infotainment. And personally, I have no issues using this stuff. I mean, I never use it when I drive. So I personally, I just don't care. Uh, I feel like it's intuitively laid out, but it, I can, I get it. It can be a little frustrating. Like you over jump things. It's hard to like get it precise. That's the only complaint I have with it. Otherwise it's a fine, it's a fine system actually. I have no other issues with it, but many people hate it. So keep that in mind. It might not be the best thing in the world. I love this little, it's not carbon fiber, but it's like this graphite material going across. That's one of the reasons why I love this interior space. It's a very cool design and pattern. I appreciate that. You got a sunroof here. You got a good storage space in the armrest and in the glove box as well. So that's great. Like I mentioned, the comfort of the car is great, like the ride quality, but also the seats also really help with the ride quality as well. So I appreciate all of these things. I got plenty of space to sit back there in the rear seats. No, you can't fold down the rear seats. That's the only sucky part. You can't do it with the ES either. That's the other thing that really sucks with these Lexus cars. I hate that you can't fold down the rear seats. It would make it far more practical, but you can't. But anyway, you got very comfy seats, of course, in the back as well, same as the front seats. And uh, it's great, man. I, I like it back there. You got HVAC, all that good stuff. And speaking of practicality the trunk space is massive dude so i guess i can't blame this particular car for not being able to uh fold down the rear seats but the trunk is pretty massive i will give it that so with all that established what's the conclusion here go out and get this particular model year i can't speak on the 17s 18s and the 19s but i can't speak on this 2020 f sport model with the rear wheel drive this is great this is a car i would personally be proud to purchase and put on my driveway i kid you not this is the type of car i can drive it for a very long time and not get tired of it so this is a true shame that they're uh not making this car anymore because man they they got it right here they dialed this in perfectly they took the 2015 formula and they absolutely um perfected it I don't know if they change it after 2018. I, I keep saying that, I keep repeating that. I just can't believe how freaking good this car is. Yeah, I'm so happy with it, man. I feel like you would be too. Uh, I'm glad I checked this car out before writing it off completely to people. This is fantastic. So special thanks for to uh, Johnson Lexus for letting me check this car out. Again, Danny's information will be down in the description box below. This is a pre-owned car, but it is a 2020 if you want to take advantage of this very nice spec. It's got all the options in it, basically ML audio, heated cooled seats, all that crap. So if you want it, come get it. Uh, but again, I'm not paid to you know tell you this car is good or not. But you also, I forgot to mention, you can get $200 off, but that's only for you. Uh, again, I don't get anything out of these reviews. So I just want to present this car to you. Hopefully you found value with this review. Thanks again for watching it. Take care and goodbye.